Well, today on Nation, we're talking about some out-of-the-box ideas for generating new work. So if you like new work, which who doesn't? Either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from WCR, windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a look around, hopefully you dig it. We have 150 plus straight weeks of this thing going. 30 minutes or more podcasts. Go back, listen, watch, whatever. It's available SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, anywhere podcasts are available, I guess. Yeah, go check it out. Hopefully you dig it. Hopefully it's better than a cat video and uh, hopefully you get something from it. If you are one of the nation, one of the cool kids, if you are somebody who orders through me, huh? shameless plug, What's up? Virtual high five to you and your awesomeness. Um, It is because of you that I have brand name tennis shoes. That was the last one that uh, I got. By the way, if you ever order with me, which I hope you do, a big, small, it doesn't matter, it doesn't cost you extra, let me know and I'll put your order in for you. But uh, let me know what kind of name brand things I can buy. You guys, I don't know how that ever started, but... uh, uh, about like a quarter of everybody who puts an order in always is like, ah, now you can get some name brand fill in the blank. And it's great. I love it. Uh, if you want to order through me, which I hope you do, it's 862-312-2026. Anything window cleaning related, we sell. Uh, we're fast shipping, same day, almost always. And it doesn't cost you any extra to have me ship it or order it for you, but it does give me credit. Like I said, virtual high five. Uh, 862-312-2026, throw it in your cart, text me, be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. And at the end of this episode, I will give you a code for 5% off, which is nice because free money is free money. So make sure to listen to that. Uh, but a couple of quick shout outs today. I want to say what's up to Chase Ziegler. What's up, man? David Rodriguez. Hopefully you're finally listening. Uh, Lewis Cotney. What is up, man? Everybody knows Lewis and Dan Campbell. What's up? Man, uh, thank you to you. Uh, some of you guys, I always do shout outs for. Um, and just a little thank you for. I can't shout out everybody every single week, but uh, do remind me and I'll try to put you into that uh, shout outs here. Shout out on a industry podcast, nothing better in the world. Uh, no, but uh, today we're actually talking about ideas, kind of out of the box ideas for generating new work and that actually came to us from jonathan barthol um barthalf jonathan it came from jonathan jonathan gave that idea um it's a killer idea actually you know a lot of this stuff that as things go by and the longer you're in business the more you realize that not everything that you do is kind of traditional in the way that you get new work Now, I'll give you kind of an example. We did a um, split test one time where we bought, uh, I think it was just uh, 5,000 or so, full gloss, full sheet, nice, you know, flyers. Then we also did a big printing. I think we did 500 on the, uh, like, yellow canary, black and white. We did two reams from a printing place. So 500, I think it was. Sheets, just black on yellow paper looked super cheap now mind you a photocopy is five cents when you get the high-end ones from at cost printing or got print or qps steve they're like a penny two pennies like so cheap but it's perceived value so when we sent all those out we actually had a higher return on the uh the kind of fake looking ones but the clients that came we're looking for a lower price than the other ones. So it's all in image. And stuff like that really kind of gets you out of your element to experiment. Same thing with getting new work. Getting new work is one of those things that you always have to be refreshing because even if you think that you're full, people die, people move, people stop using you, people lose their job, people have a nephew looking for work and they're gonna have them do that. You're gonna lose some work. You just are. So you always have to be replenishing. You always have to be looking for new work. But how do you do that? We know 
EDDM is out there. That's Every Door Direct Mail by the post office. That is kind of a blanket mailing. Works good. Uh, we know Facebook ads, one of my all-time favorite ways to generate any type of work, but it costs money. Uh, click ads from Google is another good one, but it costs money. You guys know my thoughts on Home Advisor Service Magic. Uh, what used to be called Service Magic. Home Advisor, Yelp, uh, all those kind of other things, but those cost money. So what are some really good ways to generate business, new business, with not breaking the bank and that you may not be thinking about? Because there's some of the ways that I've actually generated work work better and there are ways you're like, I didn't even think anybody would see or care. And by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, that's where the conversation is, so make sure to go over there Comment down below like the weirdest thing you've ever done to generate new work. I want to hear it. But here's some that I really like. Uh, and we'll kind of go off. I got a little list, but uh, they're not in any particular order. But the first one that I'm going to start with is candy jars. Now, a candy jar is very, very simple. It's placed in a commercial location. Um, it is in an office. If you have property managers, if you have, uh, you know, a suite, something like that, where they have a front desk. Now having that and putting a candy jar in costs you next to nothing. The jars are only a couple bucks. You get uh, nice printed labels on them or something inserted or those laser engraved versions or something. So it doesn't look tacky and horrible. And you bring it to the location you already do service at. You drop it off and say, hey, I just wanted to say thanks for uh, always letting me do your service. I just want to put a candy jar out. I'll refill it, you know, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever, how big the jar is. And uh, you guys always have fresh candy and uh, just something at least I can do. People go, wow, that's really nice. Well, what that does is not only does it allow you to continue to go back there. So you're going to be there filling the jar or somebody from your company is where you can ask how are things what can we do is there any new you're always going to be present at that location but since we're talking about new business what does it do for that it means everybody who goes up to that desk as they're staying there oh yes is john available oh let me check all right stay in there they're going to look at what's on the desk and they're going to see your information you're going to shoot your information your brand your logo your number your information generally out to everybody who comes in through that office. Now, are you going to reach a million people with this? No, but it has a lot of benefits to it that a lot of people just don't think about. Um, just being in front of the people that often is a huge benefit in itself, much less all the new traffic. People like candy. No one's ever going to say no to like free candy, especially like front desk. If you know anything about offices too, if you ever bring cookies or uh, donuts or any type of pastries or anything into an office, they will never, ever, ever turn you away because the office lunchroom is like a, like a shark tank of feeding frenzy. If something's in there, it gets like, like piranhas. So just clean it down to the, the wrapper, which by the way, if you want to get any ideas for that, uh, I have a couple episodes out on uh, commercial clients, getting commercial clients. And it talks about that and how to, you know, get your logo out in front of these property managers when you just bring them treats. I also knew a guy who had cookies custom made for the office. And they were all these fresh baked cookies and the icing on top was like printed logos. Um, you know, I've done uh, printed logos underneath a tray of snacks. Um, it's just really, it's a good way to stay relevant. Remember, that's... In business, that's what you do. That's why the McDonald's around the world have billboards that just have pictures of cheeseburgers on them. You've got to stay relevant. You stay relevant or you die. That's the premise, basically. So anyway, candy jars. It's a great one. Try it. Let me know how it works. If you do try it, I want to know. Uh, and again, if you're on YouTube, make sure to thumbs up. Our videos have been posting really weird, so it hasn't been coming out on Friday. But either way, we're trying to get work on that. Um... And let me know any other uh, weird ideas or if any of this stuff works for you. Uh, another really, really good um, way to generate work that a lot of you know about. Uh, I've used it for 10 years 
and it is probably up there in the top five best ways to generate work. And it's a five up, five down. Let me explain this. If you don't know what it is, you're living under a rock. If you do know what it is, awesome, but let's elaborate a little on it. A five up, five down is exactly this. It is when you do a house, you go up one direction, you go down one direction, so the neighbors of each side of that house, cross the street and do three over there. Totals five total uh, up and downs. You got five different houses. Some people go, you know, three one way, three one way, six across, whatever. You can do it however you want, but that's how we do it. We go one next door, one next door, and then three across. And what this does is we put out a flyer that's called the Pardon the Glare Flyer. It is a door hanger uh, at cost printing in the WCRA. We have the templates for it. It's very basic. It's just light reflecting off a window and it just says part in the glare. We just got done cleaning your neighbor's windows. If there's anything we can do for you, please give us a call. Here's the number, website, blah, blah, blah. Now, what does a five up, five down really do? That triggers the whole keep up with the Johnsons thing. When somebody in your neighborhood or somebody around you or one of your friends or blah, 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 fill in the blank, gets something new or has something done, everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. It's like when, you know, the neighbor builds a backyard pagoda, then all of a sudden they start popping up, right? It's the same thing. So if you have a flyer or a door hanger and that door hanger says, hey, we just cleaned your neighbor's windows, you kind of subliminally are like, well... If you know, Tom had it done, we should probably get it done, right? So it really does translate that way. It shows people you're in the neighborhood because if you're in the neighborhood and they always are getting those or they're seeing them, they just are reminded that your company exists. They get the information they need so they can do the research. Maybe you have response a bit on your site. By the way, awesome, awesome program. If you have response a bit, then they can go on. They're going to look it up and they're going to book a quote, uh, get a quote and book a job. Maybe they're going to do all that and it's not even going to be because they want to keep up with the Joneses kind of on the outside, but just because they may be looking for that. So kind of doing that five up, five down is super, super easy. Now, the biggest problem with the five up, five down is making sure that people do them every single time. Now, if you have employees, it's very hard because when everybody's done with a job, they want to run off to the next job and that's cool. Like I get it. I understand if they are commissioned, uh, that's a little tougher um, tell them it's still required and then put a code on their sticker on there so that, you know, they can get extra, you know, bonuses or something from it. It's not a bad idea even for the hourly. We've done that in the past where above and beyond stuff, every, uh, employee got their own code. And then, uh, when somebody would call and say, Oh, how'd you hear of us? Oh, we just got a flyer. Oh, great. Is there a coupon code on there? And then we can give credit to the person who handed it out. Uh, that's another kind of little incentive, but another problem is that uh, not always do the codes come back, so they don't have a huge return. It's not like they're making a ton of money with that. But doing the five up, five down is awesome. It gets you out there. It gets you in front of people. Uh, and again, keeping up with the Joneses. That's kind of the name of the game. And door flyers are super, super cheap. But if you make it a habit that your employees have to do, or if you're by yourself, just do it. When everything's said and done, when you go back to the thing, grab them and go walk. Like just that alone. We've closed it right on the site where you walk up to a house and go, hey, sorry to bug you. I'm just dropping off a flyer. I always say that beforehand because people hate like door-to-door telemarketers. You know, I'm sorry. If you do a lot of that. It's just, it's it sucks. But I just, oh, drop it off. Oh, yeah, okay. And just hand it to them. I don't say anything and I walk. Let me ask you, you guys do windows. What would you charge for a house? Oh, hey, well. You know, like, or a lot of times they've seen you working across the street and they'll come out. If they're going to talk to you anyway, oh, hey, we were just across the street over at Doris's house and just dropping off a flyer, show you who we are. Really nonchalant, non-invasive. People are super happy about that, but we've closed them right on site. We've closed and upsold them before we even got back in the truck and left. We've gotten scheduled jobs, all that, all off of them. And not only that, even if nobody calls you from that, you're still getting that logo out so that if and when they're ready to do it or somebody mentions it, either they kept it or at least they have that brand 
recognition, name recognition, anything where when somebody asks, you're the first person they come uh, comes to mind and thinks about. So super, super, super good. Five out five jobs. Uh, figure that out. It's great. Another one on that same line is what's called a brag sign. And a brag sign is basically a yard sign, full color, that just says your company and your phone number and maybe a website. Super, super simple. Just says window cleaning. 555, blah, 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 xyz.com. That's all it says. It's colorful. It's not junky sign. They're nice, actual printed signs. And what that is, is at the end of a job, or we actually do it before the job, we'll talk to them and say, hey, um, when we're all done, I can take $20 off your, your bill right now if we could just put this sign in your yard. It's just a little plastic sign, and we come pick it up in seven days. Just letting your neighbors know that uh, you know, you're know you you're getting your windows cleaned or your roof done or your siding. And I've had houses where I've put up three signs for different services. Now you're thinking, well, that's kind of a lot of money to get. No. Listen, how much would you charge or how much would you pay to get a new customer? I'd pay $20. If you came to me right now, we're like, hey, I got this person who wants to uh, have their windows done. You give me 20 bucks for it? Be, yeah, right? Because you're going to make it up. Cost of acquisition. It's the same with the signs because now all the neighbors are seeing it. All the neighbors are seeing it, everyone that passes by, and a lot of times you do more than one house in a row or next to each other or on a street, and these signs start popping up everywhere. All of a sudden, you own the block. Like They only call you because they see you're in the area. A sign is great. You could do it for a couple days. You could do it for seven. Seven's a little bit long. Uh, What I do is whenever we put up a sign, we actually pick it up that Friday. So I always say, um, whatever the day is, even if it is Friday, we'll get it still tonight. But I would say, um, we'll take $20 off if we could put this sign in your yard and we take it down before the weekend. Um, that way, people aren't inconvenienced. They're doing all their yard work and stuff during the weekend. Um, they don't disappear as much that way. Uh, and everybody who drives by sees it. A Berg sign is super, super good because you can still put a yard sign in your yard and it's not going to be lasting that long. Now, $20 is nothing because it's coming off of a purchase that they've already made. And a brag sign really, really helps. But don't go crazy. I've seen some of these where it's just this like phone book of service. No one cares. No one's reading all of that. You read it all because you proofread it. All people do is when they see it, that catch, catches their eye. Whatever the biggest letters are on there, window cleaning. If somebody sees it, doesn't care, they keep driving. If somebody sees it and kind of wants window cleaning, they double take Now they can look at the rest of the information. If you put window cleaning, pressure washing, gutter repair, you know, flat surface cleaning, house washing, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning, nobody cares about all that. It's your job to upsell once they call you. So getting it out there, just catching their attention, getting kind of them to look at it, that's the big one. That's a brag sign, by the way. Uh, I don't necessarily like brag... Uh, signs like that just random like on corners and stuff I think that's pretty awful sorry if you do that but I've never seen a sign uh, that's just like littered on a corner somewhere a you can't break through the noise and b it's like I don't know uh, it's kind of tacky when it's in somebody's yard I'm like oh they had the services done it's like you know a uh, roofing repair or our uh, general contractor or something puts a sign in the yard I get that your vehicle will be there when you're doing the service, but you're only going to be there for a couple hours. Once you leave, the sign kind of takes up. It's not invasive, really. So, brag signs. Definitely worth checking out. Um, and another big one that uh, is got to be in the top five, I would say, for my all-time like most money made on like out-of-the-box ideas is just being part of Facebook groups that are specific. So... If you go on Facebook, search out your town's name, just your town's name, and hit enter. You'll see a thousand different groups from like mommy groups to, you know, play date groups to yard sale groups to, you know, anything. And they're all tethered to the town. Now you can do your town or any other other towns that you do work in, but 
search by that name. Now, the big nice thing about that is that when you have um, uh, groups out there, you know everybody that's in the group, for the most part, is in your um, neighborhood that you're in or the neighborhood that you're trying to connect with. So the benefit of it is, is don't be spammy. Spammy stuff just doesn't sell. Like, if you can't break through the noise, that's one thing. But if you are the noise, that's another thing, right? So don't do that. But you can um, just comment on things. When people are like, oh, you know, does anybody know a window cleaner? Comment on there. I'd love to, to help you out, you know? Or if you see somebody, you know, that uh, is in the group that you've done work for, putting a post and tagging them, something along those lines, you can certainly do. A little bit harder to do. But just being there, you'd be surprised at how many people ask about services. Um, you know, hey, we're new to town. We're looking for some good contractors. Any ideas? Putting that out there. Always kind of like refreshing people's minds giving the information you're not going to be posting as a page necessarily so like if you have you know a jersey wcr nation facebook page that isn't going to be in the group it's going to be an individual so it gives it a little bit more credibility to it um it uh allows people to see it again on a bigger scale you know that everybody you're going to be advertising to if you will is all in your area it's just really really beneficial the downside to Facebook groups is there's noise and some groups are not moderated like they should be. So you have just random people always spamming the groups and you get lost in the noise. If you go in a group and you see all those people in the MLM like, you know, I'm a Mary Kay representative and I do those nail sticker things or, or tastefully simple or have a party. Have, if you see a lot of that, then stay clear of it because you're going to be lost in the noise. And we don't necessarily want to be lost in the noise because this kind of stuff is a lot of work. Uh, the more work you put into these, the better they are, but you're also not paying for them, so there's always going to be more work. And you know, if you guys have been in business for a while, there's two things. There's two ways an advertisement can happen. You either have more time than money or more money than time. And if you got more money than time, these ones that I'm talking about, don't don't go and do. I mean, you know, signs and things you can, but like the candy jar and the posting in the groups, these are time consuming. If you have more money than you do time, then now all of a sudden the money you're paying for advertising is so worth it. That's your EDDM. Uh, that is Facebook ads. That's that stuff. But if you're sitting there and you're like, man, I got more time than money right now, but I need some clients, this is the way to go. And by the way, there's always a point in uh, transitioning kind of your, your way that your company runs. And this can go back and forth between busy times and not. Remember, stuff that is free can be advertised all year long. It doesn't matter because even if your ROI is low, you're still keeping your brand out there. You're kind of keeping it in front of people and it's super beneficial. But if you're paying for a type of advertising, don't do it when it's not busy. Don't go, oh man, it is December, it's January, it's February, it's whatever month. I'm so slow, I gotta advertise. Or even better, what I see is, oh, it's January, I gotta go do like whole house window cleaning, 20 bucks. Don't go do stupidly cheap deals because it's still not in anybody's brain. I always say like, if you're on a diet, Whatever the price is of a cheeseburger, it doesn't matter because you're not going to buy it. Same thing with what's going on. Now, we came out of COVID. COVID stuff was the same where there was just a point where it's not the deal. It's not a flashy advertisement. It's just people were uncomfortable with everything and nobody was buying. So doing any type of advertising or ridiculously cheap sales just didn't matter, right? Same thing with this. You have time or you have money. You don't have both. Pick and choose. Uh, but that is posting in local groups. Do it. It's awesome. Uh, but the number one thing, I guess, in the list that doesn't actually be a top five, I'm just used to being excited for number one, is my actual number one on the list. It's just giveaways and fundraisers. And now, again, you're like, well, you said it wasn't going to cost you anything. 
Okay, let's break this down. If I give, and any, any single uh, fundraiser or silent auction or benefit or anything, I donate to every single one of them. And I'll tell you why. Is not only are you out of the box, the, the best thing you can do for your business is people are used to seeing companies in you know, ads and this and that. But if you're sitting at a fundraiser and all of a sudden you're like, hey, isn't that that window cleaning company? Oh, they donated. And then you're at something else and you see it and something else and you see it and something else. It's like, wow, they're everywhere as opposed to just those normal avenues. So not getting lost in the noise, this is the number one thing. And here's the other thing is, is that I, I completely enjoy helping organizations. Now, um, when you donate a gift certificate, so we do $200 gift certificate. <clears throat> we do, sorry, we do $200 gift certificates. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say, but we do $200 gift certificates. Uh, and I give out two of them to auction off. And the reason is, is because if somebody's going to bid $100, instead of just getting them $100, there'll be like a bidder at 100 and somebody at 80. So then the guy with the 100 wins one and then the guy with the 80 bids in the second one and they ends up getting more money. But now what I've just done is basically, basically gotten two people services with us. Now, for the most part, if you do an inside and outside 20 window special, whatever, that $200 goes pretty darn far. But if you have any sills, uh, tracks, if you have any uh, screens done, gutter cleaning, all the upsells that I can do, that is on top of it. So not only did I make some organization or benefit some money, I also advertised to everybody that is there because every single person looks at the stuff. So say you got a thousand people, 500 people, 200 people at this benefit, 200 people saw your logo, right? Some people liked it so much they bid on it. A lot of times people bid on things and never use them. So I always put like a year expiration on there or something just to get people to actually use them so they don't sit around. But on top of all that, I'll donate to everybody because you're helping somebody and you're letting it get out there. The other thing is there's always an upsell possibility. And the other side of it is I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a call and said, hey, I was just at the penguin <laughs> benefit for penguins or whatever. I've actually done that one. We did a big one for a, our zoo wanted a new giraffe. So they're buying this new giraffe. So I donated a bunch of stuff to that one too. And I thought that was weird because they got the giraffe. So I was like, ah, it kind of helped with the giraffe. Anyway. Um, and, uh, oh, great. Oh, did you win the gift certificate? No, you know what? I didn't even bid. We bid on a bunch of other stuff. But I want to still uh, set up an appointment with you. I would tell you probably 50% of the time that I do these benefits, I get a call. It's just that great because I'll give them some brochures and uh, everything else to go and they put it out on the front of the table. People will take that stuff regardless because they're like, oh, these guys donated to it. There's just, it translates so stinking well, so well. Um, so it's something worth doing. And then here's the truth of the matter is, is say you do a $200 house, you're going to be taking maybe two hours, two man hours, give or take, right? What are you making an hour? 7,500 bucks, right? So say you're doing two hours for even math on this house. What does two hours actually cost you? When I send a tech, it's what that check is. That $40 and, you know, $40 in uh, pay uh, or whatever. It's way less than the actual dollar amount. Obviously, that's how we make our money. Now, if I've upsold anything, that absorbs the cost and it just basically helped us get in. And the other thing is, is if I can get somebody in, even if it's free, even if I make no money, guess what? I'm going to have their information and call them in the spring and fall. I'm going to send them all their emails and I'm going to send them all the information and postcards. They will be one of my customers. The other thing is, is that before I leave the house, just like every other customer, I want to make sure that they have their next service filled out and signed up. Now they don't have a gift certificate for that one, but if I can get a customer, even if the first one's free, but I get them on the schedule and maybe do them in the next three, every three months, every six months, once a year, for the next foreseeable future, that is how you build an empire. That's how you grow a business. That's how you continue to get bigger and better. So giveaways and fundraisers. Look in your area. See if there's fundraisers coming up. I've even called and been like, hey, I heard your fundraiser. I just want to give a couple gift certificates. Jeez Louise. Gift certificates away to help you guys out. 
everybody's absolutely happy. They're just looking for free things. So do that. Check it out. It's definitely, definitely worth it. Now, this week's code. If you would like to buy, which I hope you do, give me a call at 862-312-2026. You guys have been phenomenal through all this, by the way. Uh, with everybody ordering and making sure that I put the order in for you, it really, really means so much that you guys uh, are loyal to letting me put those orders in. And I do very, very, very much appreciate it. Uh, but the code this week is gift certificate because I just, I can't say it. We'll say gift certificate is the code because why not? That'll save you 5% off and it gets you free shipping. And it's kind of like a 5% off gift certificate. Kind of. Anyway, let me know. 862-312-2026. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, everything's in your cart, my cart. Make sure you're logged in, though, because otherwise it doesn't show up in your cart. And then just tell me gift certificate. And you also have to tell me uh, what kind of brand name things I can buy because it's great. I just love it so much. But anyway, that is the show. Thanks, guys, for watching. Thank you for everybody who orders for me. Uh, really, really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.